Hey little friend from another dimension, how sweet of you to choose to stay with me. Looking at me tenderly, your mysterious brown eyes melt my heart and enchant my soul. Oh black furry friend, you're a dream of mine. I touch your fur with my face and inhale your gypsy scent, feeling that you belong to my realms and domains from chosen fate. Sealed in our time of existing past lives, now you are here on your will to protect and serve this world in full quality life. As children whirl and society defines all that means secure living without strife. Supreme, it's children time to go to school. You know well, keep them on the straight and narrow. For they're the future, yes, they are the morrow. They must stay away from anything fool. Our hearts and minds are cleared, no thoughts of fear. Our angel, lovely Black Supreme, is near. Supreme. This is a story of a treasure from another dimension. Perhaps you will laugh, then you may sigh, but true it is cherished by my children and I. So sit back, Relax and come into my world for a short time and perhaps you will come out a happier person in a multi-dimensional spin. Such a dark road tonight, I thought, as I walked blindly pulling my light shawl closer around me. Yesterday I was gifted with a beautiful full moon and the same path had been lit up in blue hues, reflecting stars. I kept walking in a steady pace and wondering why I was there and where I was going to. Suddenly I sensed a movement in the darkness ahead of me and as I approached the area a wild dog growled and jumped at me, grabbing my right arm with its sharp teeth. I winced with pain, but did not change the rhythm of my step as I pushed it aside. It came at me again, each time I pushed him away, aware of the pain, but unperturbed by his vicious teeth. I turned on a corner and my eyes rested on a caravan of gypsies. They were acting in belligerent ways and screaming. I didn't fear to get closer to them, but understood the importance for me to keep my steps steady so as not to draw attention to myself. Then I heard the leader saying, hurry up, we have to get out of here now. He was very tall with a long beard and hair down his back. He was wearing a long coat and was fiddling with an old time watch. I could sense others around and an urgency in their steps. My wild companion immediately ran to the caravan and jumped inside of one of the wagons. Come on, let's go, the leader said and asked. Where is Supreme? We can't find Supreme. We have to leave him, for if we wait here another moment, we could get stuck indefinitely. Supreme always finds his own way. I passed steadily, unnoticed, as the caravan departed, disappearing into the night. Silence returned. I slowly became aware of warmth on my left side and looked down to see a big black furry dog. Our eyes met as he panted happily. So you must be supreme, I affirmed. Although not a bark was uttered, I heard an answer in my head clearly saying yes, and I continued. You're a cuddly little fellow, aren't you? The children would love you. Do you want to come home with me? He suddenly started running around me and trotted on ahead, tail held high, black fur swaying softly in the breeze as we both kept our walk into the night. I woke to a sunny day and to the sound of birds singing and children giggling, stretching my body, feeling the love of the universe washing through me. I was sleepily turned to the wall side and saw two warm brown eyes staring at me. Supreme, I screamed my hand naturally touching his soft fur. He was warm and alive. I sat up on the bed trying to clear my thoughts. My soul traveled every night, but I had never returned with a being from another dimension. This was the first time. How would I explain this to the children? Well, the truth is all I can give them. So why is he here? I'm sure all will be revealed in time. One wise thing I have learned from life, and that is to live in the now, 
and to embrace each moment in harmonious and courageous ways, for the pillars of one's future are built from actions of the now. I could hear the children's voices in the distance. They were playing, laughing and joking with each other, and I could feel their energy heading for my room like a typhoon. I jumped under the covers for protection. The noise continued as they came to my door, and then a sudden silence. I peeked out from my covers and looked at the three little faces, full of wonder, mouths dropped open. Alex, could you bring me some water, please? I asked. I mumbled. No one moved. Then Bella broke the silence. Mama, where did he come from? His name is Supreme, darling. May we rub him? asked Billy. I don't know. What do you think, Supreme? The children were already cuddling, rubbing and kissing him. Mama, he's so gentle. May we keep him? asked Alex. Well, I suppose that is up to Supreme. At least he knows that he is welcome to stay as long as he wishes. Well, I hope he stays forever, said Billy, caressing Supreme's fur. Supreme looked at me, and I knew that I had to tell the children more of our relation and how we met. Children, I have told you that I sometimes travel in my sleep. The three little faces were now watching me, curiously about what I had to say to them. Last night, I took a trip and met Supreme in another dimension. And when I woke up, he was on my bed. Wow, Mama, that's fantastic, Bella said. How wonderful. Children are so accepting. What will we say if people ask where he came from? You can say that Mama brought him home from a trip. They looked pleased. Days and weeks passed as Supreme became a part of the family. I can happily say that it now feels that he has been with us forever. He gave us more love than we could possibly give him. And I, well, I felt protected. Yes, don't laugh. He took care of me and the children, like a mother hen with her chicks during the day. But the most amazing part of my relationship with him was at night, when he would travel with me and keep all undesirables away. We visited war zones, saved children and prevented suicides. I could go on and on talking about our adventures. Of course, I was doing all this before Supreme came into my life, but he managed to fit into each scenario in such a way that I found myself wondering on how I could possibly have ever existed without him. I would wake each morning to Supreme sound asleep on my bed, and I would thank the universe for such a sweet treasure, always knowing and deeply understanding that he might leave at any time. Every morning, Supreme would walk the children to school, and when their day was over, he would be waiting to walk them home. He stayed with us for many years until one night he quietly said his goodbyes. I went to bed like in any other night and found myself back on that dark path to nowhere. Supreme by my side. We turned the corner and the gypsy caravan was there. He looked at me and I stooped down to hug him. Thank you, I whispered. You will always be here in my heart. He jumped into the caravan as it sped off. I stood rooted to the spot and then I saw the face of a cherub peeking out from the window and I felt a sharp sensation in my heart as my soul danced a goodbye. The kids were downstairs laughing and talking fast and then they came upstairs knocking my bedroom's door. Mama, Mama, come and look through the window. There is a big black dog in the garden. The cell phone rang. When I said yes, my sister told me to be careful because two runaway dogs were running around my area. I ended the call and went to look through the window. The children were playing in the garden. It was in the mid-afternoon. That's when I realized that all was but a dream I had while napping after luncheon. It was Saturday and the kids didn't go to school. <laughs>